Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu wa Salamu ala Rasulullah. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I praise and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who I praise and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us all and gather us among those who are righteous. May the best day of our life be the day that we meet Him, and may the last of our actions be the best of our actions. May we live according to the Quran al Kareem and to the levels and expectations that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at for his brothers that were come after him. May, be he, may he be our examples in the life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment give us our books with the right hand, not with our left hand or behind our back. May he enlighten us when we cross the bridge. Brothers and sisters, I welcome you back again to our uh, episodes and series of Eternal Message. The show that I have enjoyed quite quite a lot, and I'm sure the brothers here have enjoyed it with me, and I hope that you have enjoyed this show. The show of eternal message, the message of life, the message of this deen, the message of la ilaha illallah, the message of Islam, our message, the message that we have believed in all along, and we hope to die. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not die unless you are believers Muslim. and Muslims that surrender themselves to the teachings and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I welcome you, I would like to welcome the brothers here that are sitting with, with me. So exciting and uh, energetic. Brother Akmal from Malaysia and Noor from Indonesia. Uh, and from the United States, Brother Abdul Fattah. And from Africa, Guinea Conakry, Brother Ibrahim. And you yourself, from whatever country you're in, whatever time zone that you have, it is time for us to learn. We will learn again something new. Something about our creed. Something about our aqidah, something about our faith. In our last episode, we talked about the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you have seen, the Muslims believe in all the books as they were revealed before they were changed and altered. And we cannot be Muslims in the Quran unless we were Muslims in believing in the Torah and the Gospels, Gospel and in, in, in the Psalms of David, in the scriptures of Abraham and Musa. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to talk about our belief in the messengers and prophets. Messenger. In the messengers of prophets. We believe, as we said in our last episode, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demanded that he is to be obeyed and worshipped, then there has to be a way to worship him and to obey him. And that is why he revealed the books. But the books at times can be confusing and not clear. It might need to be explained or at least they might be general and the details might have to be determined or explained by a different method in a different form. That method and form is the sending of the messengers, the chosen of the messengers and prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose among men, among the men, messengers and prophets to reveal his message, to teach his books and to show the way. These messengers are many, the prophets are many. They started with Adam. Peace be upon him as we as Muslims, as the many of the scholars have said, that Adam was one of the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have chosen. And then it continued the series of prophets and messengers throughout the time until the time of Muhammad, the seal of all prophets. These prophets and messengers each came to their people at specific time for the needs that their people have needed. And every prophet, every nation had a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said, وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَافِيهَا نَذِيرٍ And this is part of our faith. At the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last three ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah, if you are to read it, it says, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِي لَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ differentiate between the prophets and messengers. They all came with their message and delivered it clearly and perfectly. And every prophet came with the same message when it comes down to the creed. Every one of them came to say, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And that ayah that I recited, hey, the prophet believes as the believers do believe in Allah, in his angels, in his books, in the messengers. And those who believe do not differentiate between these prophets and messengers because they all fulfilled the message. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِ أَنِ عُبُدُ اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ We have sent to every nation a messenger 
to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to avoid worshiping anything else. These messengers, they came with the same message, but during the process of time, they came with different laws. Mm-hmm. Every nation, we have given them a different laws and a different by, uh, constitution. But the actual message at the beginning is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him alone. How many messengers have there been in the history of mankind? Only Allah knows. We know that every nation had a messenger. Mm-hmm. But only Allah knows how many of those messengers existed. We know by name 25 in the Qur'an al kareem In the Qur'an al kareem there are 25 messengers mentioned by name. There is a poem in the Arabic language that kind of summarizes all of these numbers. It says, فِي تِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا مِنْهُمْ ثَمَانِيَةٌ مِنْ بَعْدِ عَشْرٍ وَيَبْقَى سَبْعَةٌ وَهُمُ إِدْرِيسُ هُودٌ شَعِيبٌ صَالِحٌ وَكَذَا ذُو الْكِفْلِ آدَمُ بِالْمُخْتَارِ قَدْ خُتِمُ hey, In the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, I believe, uh, في تِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا There's 18 prophets at one time mentioned. And then there are seven left, which is Idris, Wuhud, Wasalih, and Dhul-Kif, and the rest of the messengers. But we know, without getting into the details of all those names, that I know you will not be able to memorize, that there are 25 messengers by name in the Qur'an al kareem How many, Ya Noor? 25. 25 messengers mentioned by name. Mm-hmm. Is there more messengers? Yeah, Abdul Fattah? Only Allah knows, you know. Oh, there's sure. definitely more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we just don't, don't know. Because Allah yeah. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ hey, Some of them we have, you know, yes, yes. given the stories of them to you, and some, some we, we did not. Yeah. So we know that there are many prophets that they are not mentioned. Okay. Mm-hmm. These prophets, you had a question? Yes, I have a question. Uh, did a prophet... Uh, Made a mistake to like a human. A okay. common we'll, human. We'll, we'll keep this question to a little later in this right. session, inshallah. Let's try to get the basics of our class. The messengers and the prophets differ. There is a difference between a messenger and a prophet, yeah. and there is a difference between a prophet. Pay attention, Ya Nur. Okay. A messenger is one that came to his people with a new message, a new laws. Not the message of creed. It's the same, never changes. But new laws. Like Moses came to his people with a new law. And Jesus came to his people with a new law. And Abraham to his people had new law. And Noah to his people had new law. These are messengers. They came to their people with new laws. And they were ordered to deliver those laws and to teach them. While the prophet comes in order to deliver a message that had, that had already been there, that existed already. As a reminder. Oh. As, an, as an example again, oh. Oh. the difference between Musa and Harun. Yeah. Harun is a prophet and Musa is a messenger yes, and a yeah. prophet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Musa is a messenger and a prophet because he had a book that he revealed to the people in laws. Yeah. And he was ordered to deliver it while Harun was with him at the same time. But he was a prophet to deliver the message that Musa came with. So he was just a wazir, meaning a supporter. A reinforcer. A reinforcer. Mm-hmm. To come in to reinforce the message that Musa salam came with. Mm-hmm. So there is a difference between prophets and messengers. And that's the, different, that's the one major difference that I want you to understand. What is a prophet? It's someone that comes to deliver a message that had already existed, yeah. probably forgotten, but to re-establish that message and we reinforce it. Yeah. Like Isa alayhi salam and Yahya. Yes. Yahya was a prophet, while yeah. Isa was a messenger. Correct. Okay? And the messenger is the one that comes with a message, a new message that yeah. might be different from the one before and yeah. was ordered to follow it. Yeah. There's also the messengers, they also are different in a sense of what they went through. Of yeah. calamities yeah. and challenges. Mm-hmm. And we have five major messengers in time that they went through more than any other messenger went through. They are called Ulul Azmi Min al Rusul. Ulul Azm. The messengers of power, mm. uh, the messengers of persistence. Can we see if we know them before I say them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ibrahim, can you give me one? Yeah, we have Sayyidina Muhammad. Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he was the last one. Yeah. So you're starting from there. Yeah, exactly. uh, and he went through more than anyone else in the history of mankind. 
The next one, uh, can we have Nur? Nuh. Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh was the first of the five. And Nuh lived for 950 years. Brothers and sisters, 950 years to deliver the message. Mm -hmm. To deliver the message. And only a few believed in him. The second one, Jesus. after Nuh, uh, after, after Nuh, can we have them in order? Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi salam. salam. Ibrahim. Ibrahim, that's because <laughs> it's your name, yeah, Ibrahim. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, imagine he was a nation within one man. He faced his father and faced his clan in the, all the world and declared to them that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we have the third one? I, I guess we could say uh, Jesus Christ alayhi salam. We prophet. could say before yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, before. Moses. 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 Musa yeah, alayhi salam. Musa yeah. alayhi salam. In fact, well, there's a saying that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam says, mm. Rahimallahu akhi Musa laqad uudhiya akhtar mimma uudhina fa sabah. Mm. And may Allah have mercy on our brother Musa. He was troubled and trialed more than we were and he was Shabu. patient. He was troubled with his own people, the children of Israel, more than any other prophet from any of his people. Mm. And then we have, as you said, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus as being one of the five major prophets. And Isa alayhi salam from childhood, from the time of cradle, and he's struggling with his people, till the time that they tried to kill him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him, so he was never crucified, but elevated to the heavens, and he will return, inshallah, to earth, and rule with Islam until it's time for him to die as everyone else. And finally, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, the seal of all prophets. After the break, inshallah, we will come back and talk a little bit about some of these prophets and then we'll talk about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the importance of him within our ummah, inshallah. I look forward to seeing you. Stay put and we'll be right back. Thank you. to strive to know the ruling of the Sharia on a particular incident. Why scholars had to put a lot of effort trying to figure out how to give the ruling on such topics and issues. Islam tells you to look good, to smell good. The reason of the recession was the collaboration between insurance companies and the banks. Some scholars, though stated that it is permissible for you to insure because you're compelled to do this by the government by law but you're not allowed to benefit from the insurance policy Welcome back, my dear viewers, to our show. Hopefully you have enjoyed the first half, and I hope that you will enjoy the second half. The prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The messengers, brothers and sisters from prophets, are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. Allah knows who to give his message to. It's not a coincidence or accidental or by luck that these prophets are chosen. They are chosen because they are the best of the people of their time. They are the best of the people of their time. When we are talking about Nuh alayhi salam, there was no greater man than Nuh alayhi salam. He was the best. And he lived for 950 years to deliver the message. Tell me how many people are willing to live five years to deliver the same message to people that put cotton in their ears and covers over their head so they don't listen. Just five years. You go and call people to come to prayer for four days, a couple of days, and then you find them saying, no, we don't want to pray or we're too lazy. And you walk away from them and you say, these people have no interest and there's no good in them. And Nuh alayhi salam never gave up mm -hmm. for 950 years. And he did not give up until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنَ There are no one that will believe among your people except those who have already believed. 
Mm. At that time, he said then, do not leave on the face of earth anyone alive except those who are believers. Because there's no good in them. Because every generation will advise the generation after that not to believe. Yeah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, brothers and sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salam sac- almost sacrificed his son. Tell me anyone right now that's willing to take a knife and put it on the throat of his th- son and willing to kill his own son with his own hands for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of a dream that they saw. But Ibrahim alayhi salam was willing. قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَا تَرَى فَانْظُرْ مَا تَرَى He said, يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ He said, my son, I saw, I saw him in my dream that I am to slaughter you. And his son responded, because his son was a prophet too. He said, oh my father, do what you're commanded. And he's willing to put his head and die for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam, who faced his father, who they threw, threw in fire, trying to burn. Because he did not accept to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam, Musa, who during the year of his birth, every child was ordered to be killed. And if it wasn't for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would have been killed. And then during the process of his growth, he had to grow in the house that's ultimately his, mm-hmm. his, his greatest mm-hmm. enemy. enemy yeah. mm-hmm. His greatest enemy. And he was raised in that house and mm-hmm. protected from the evil that existed in the house of Pharaoh. And then he had to run away from his hometown and to live in a distance and to sell basically himself and to marry so he can survive for 8 to 10 years. We're talking about a prophet here. How many of us are willing to have himself sold for 10 years to marry so he could protect himself? And then returning from all of that, he had to face his enemy again. And we know the stories of Pharaoh and Musa and the clashes that happened. And once he was saved, he and the people of Israel from the Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was drowned in the Nile River. Here we find or the Red Sea in the water. (laughs) Here we find Musa alayhi salam going through the same trouble and more with his people, his followers. As soon as they reached on the other side of the sea, they're worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's telling them, go to the promised land. They said, you go and your Lord and fight. We'll stay here and we're not going to come with you. But he was patient because he was special. Prophets within us, brothers and sisters, are perfect people. When it comes down into comparison to other human beings. Isa alayhi salam. Jesus. Never saw a day of rest. From the beginning of his life. Till the time he was risen to the heavens. And even when he returns. But he was that one that said from day one. Inni Abdullah atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiyya. I am the servant of Allah. He has given me the book. And appointed me as a prophet. Prophets, brothers and sisters, are not people to joke about. Mm. Or to laugh about. Or to have storytellings like some of the books say that David wrestled with the Lord. And he pinned the Lord. It's a joke towards David. And it's an absolute joke towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or some might say that the prophet Lot, Lut, slept with his daughters. Mm-hmm. Or Nuh got drunk. These people have no respect of the religions. And like we see today, when they're talking about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and having him in cartoons that are insulting to the faith as well to the messengers of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad who came out and taught humanity the perfect of manners, the best of behaviors, taught them how to organize their life, brought clans and tribes that were fighting and created peace with each other, Mm -hmm. created the greatest brotherhood that any human being has ever seen in the city of Medina, where one will have the other that he did not know as his brother or sister, and they will share their wealth and family together. He opened the hearts of people with the Qur'an al-Kareem, showed them the manners that they have to have, led them to the truth, and led them to Jannah. And throughout the generations, people have acknowledged the Prophet Muhammad as a great man. Mm-hmm. But in our 21st century, the century of technology, the century of advanced science, we find people today have not advanced in their character. 
have not advanced in their behavior and allowed themselves to attack the Rasul as well as to attack the Muslims in Islam through cartoons that they had in their Danish newspapers under the umbrella of freedom of speech. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave birth to all of us free. But our freedom, my brothers and sisters out there, is in respect of what I need as well as other people's interest. My freedom does not mean to degrade others or to insult them or to take away their values from them. My freedom is also to respect the freedom of others. There's no difference between him and I when it comes down to freedom. So as much as I care for his, he should care for mine. I have rights, and so do you. No one has the right to insult another person's faith because he assumes it to be wrong. Yes, Islam for me is my faith. And the only faith I want for myself. But it's my faith, not necessarily yours. And your faith is probably the only faith that you wish for yourself. I have no right to insult you, as you have no right to insult me. What happened in these papers that upset over a billion people around the world should give us a sign for all people around the world that if we are to coexist, if we are to live with each other in peace, if there has to be, if there will be pluralism on earth, then let us respect each other and accept each other. Yes, Noor. Uh, I just want to ask you about something that you explained about uh, insulting Rasulullah or slandering him. So, what a bad thing that we're supposed to do to face this. Is it allowed for Muslim, for example, to do some violence or maybe... No, Islam does not call on to violence, brothers and sisters. I mean, I think the Muslim Ummah overall showed their concerns and showed it in the best of ways by them walking out and telling the, uh, the people in the world that we don't accept our prophet to be insulted in our faith, to be insulted or anyone to be humiliated. Mm -hmm. But of course, human beings sometimes get overexcited and overhyped. Overreact. And mm -hmm. overreact and violence happened. That is unacceptable. Violence is unacceptable. But we see that everywhere. The media just likes to play against the Muslims. But we saw that in the United States after Katrina hit Louisiana. Mm -hmm. People walked out and they were killing each other. In fact, they were shooting the helicopters above their heads that came to save their lives. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they got overhyped and over, they overreacted yeah. and they were upset. Yeah. That was not excused for, and neither is burning or bombing or killing at any given time excused for. But I have the right to show my anger and my disappointment. And peaceful demonstrations are not wrong if they're controlled. And if I chose not to buy from you, it is a choice that I have, and that is the freedom of choice. Let us learn from this a lesson that let us respect all the prophets, all the religions, all the faith. Let the Lord judge who's right and who's wrong. And if I see myself to have the true faith, I have the right to do so. But at the end, my faith tells me, let ikraha fi din. There is no compulsion in faith. I cannot force you to embrace what I believe in even if I assume that what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. We will have a day of judgment, which it will be our next episode, <laughs> that we will all stand in front of the Lord, and He will address us on that day who's wrong and who's right. But for today, and for this world, we should declare that all prophets are sacred. All books are sacred. All religious entities are sacred. Mosques are sacred. Temples are sacred. Synagogues are sacred. Any form of house of worship we learn from the history of Islam that we are not to destroy these houses because they are sacred even if they existed in an Islamic world. Islam protects five necessities to finish this topic today. It protects the faith, everyone's faith. 
It protects the life, everyone's life. It protects the intellect, everyone's mind. Yeah. It protects the wealth, everyone's wealth. And it protects the values of families and families. Everyone's family should feel safe. These are the five necessities in Islam that Islam circulates itself around. Let us feel safe within our faith, within our lives, within our minds, within our wealth, and within our families. I thank you for being with me today and look forward to having you in the next episode. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim, as well as I thank the brothers here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.